Good morning, everyone. All right, we can do better than that. This is Demo Day 2023. Good morning. There we go. That's much better. That's much better. So I'm so glad to welcome everyone here this morning. My name is Garrett Westlake. I have the honor of being the executive director of the Da Vinci Center for Innovation here at VCU. Um, we are thrilled to host you all. Um, this is one of my favorite days of the year, having the community come join us to see what our student innovators and entrepreneurs have been doing. Um, you know, this event is not possible without the support of so many people. Um, we are so thrilled that Capital One has joined us again as the title sponsor. <laughs> we have some phenomenal community judges, um, and, and I want to highlight the fact that these aren't folks that just show up to judge this. These are individuals that mentor in our programs. They give their time all throughout the year. And the Da Vinci team that makes this possible, um, huge shout out to Lloyd and Tyrone and Dom and Reagan. Todd for being our MC. He's not only a faculty member in residence, all the hats. So, you know, I am so appreciative of all the work that it takes to bring this together. Um, and the pitches that you're about to see are going to show you why all of that hard work and support is worth it. You know, the main goal of the Da Vinci Center, something we talk about all the time, is that we are prototyping the future of higher education. And when you think about what the future of higher education might look like, to me it looks a lot more like what we're going to see today. It's uniquely human. We will use new tools and technology. We will invent new tools and technology to improve the way that we do things. But what you see today is uniquely human. The curiosity, the fear to take a risk, the students that are going to stand up here and pitch things that they've never seen before in the world that are trying to meet the needs of users and customers and people in the world is something that AI cannot do. It is something that no tech can actually do. And so as you see people come up here and be human and be a little bit nervous and be scared to put their ideas out there, this is the unique strength of something like this. This is what I think makes education so powerful and so unique um, in programs like this where we highlight innovation, entrepreneurship, and applied learning. So, you know, without further ado, um, I'm thrilled that this year, in addition to current students, we are also highlighting some alumni that have come back. And I've had the chance to meet with some of them over this week doing pitch practice. And I have to say that as this program grows, as we host, you know, this being our sixth student demo day, we now, <laughs> there we go, we now get to start to see the, the lasting impact of the things that take place today. So what you're going to get a chance to, to witness behind me in just a minute is a little bit of a highlight reel, um, a where are they now, for those of you that watch Shark Tank where they do the check-ins of where those ventures are now, we're going to see a little bit of where they are now from our alumni. Um, and then we're going to get started here this morning. Thank you all so much. My name is Julian, and I'm the founder of Jack Jack Ruger. I participated in the 2021 ECU Da Vinci Center Pre-X Accelerator Program and I pitched that spring in Demo Day as well. I stumbled upon the idea of turning jackfruit into a jerky because it's super meaty in texture and it's a very sustainable fruit as well. Once I had the opportunity to pitch during Demo Day, I ended up receiving some funding which allowed for me to start prototyping, experimenting with different flavors. And fast forward a year and a half later, we have official packaging. We're in retail stores in Richmond and across the country. We sell online and we're looking to continue to get feedback and grow as much as we can. Okay. Um, so I'm Roger J. Chase and um, founder of Anapac and we build impact sensors to track and monitor um, fighters' performance and safety. Um, when I was in VCU, I started boxing and things like that. Um, so when I was boxing and um, sparring and losing, I was kind of thinking of something I could build to kind of just track my performance. So essentially it's just like a Fitbit, but for more for fighters 
MMA or boxers, and it's just a little sensor it attached to the back of the headgear that they wear for um, protective gear. And then while they spar, things like that attracts the punches and strikes they take to the head. It attracts the amount of them and the force behind them. So that's kind of where the idea came from. And um, I'm working on the mobile application itself. The hardware manufacturing is pretty much done. And just the strap that holds the sensor I'm working on. Um, so far after that, I just came off a Indiegogo campaign that raised about $10,000. So in the next couple of months, I need to be able to deliver that product. So that's kind of what I'm really focused on. And outside of that, just prepping for accelerators. I'm applying to like, I had an interview with Techstar. So hopefully I get in that so I can get more cash and investment to keep going. So that's kind of where I'm at. My name is Carl Cross. My name is Christian Bates White and we're the founders of CatchMyCourse.com. Uh, so CatchMyCourse.com uh, is a service targeted at universities to help them forecast class demand. That would help students be able to get registered for classes easier, um, not have classes with too low space or too high space, which would help in uh, students graduate on time. So what's next? Um, I've had the luxury of working around some really amazing and talented people in the software engineering industry, uh, which I think puts us in the position to um, be able to use more technologies and, and just try more ideas. Uh, continuing to you know build relationships um, and then taking whatever ideas we see and just giving them a try. Um, over the past few years, we've done plenty of freelance projects that have shown that we know how to take something from idea to, 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 to the finish line, to completion, and, and have things used by real people that impact real people. Um, so yeah, I think the next steps is really just doing more of that. Uh, especially with things like AI, I think there are a lot of untapped possibilities out there. There's always something new to explore and to play with. I, I feel like it's a similar answer for me. Simply put, having fun with what I build and, and uh, trying to impact people's lives as positively as I can. Uh, so my name is Alex Ritchie, and the name of our project was the DuraSafe Epi Navigator, which spun out into an LLC following Demo Day. So, you know, with DuraSafe being a huge part of my launch pad, um, I'll finish my, my MHA degree in 2024, and I'll actually be starting my administrative fellowship with Sentara Healthcare. Um, and I'm particularly excited about that for many reasons, and, and one of which is is their commitment to being innovative and solving complex problems, um, with, which DuraSafe positioned me well for. So in terms of the project though from a DuraSafe standpoint we're pursuing our IP journey with BCU the College of Engineering is also a support to us as well from a long-term testing standpoint um, but myself and, and my co-founders have really leveraged the experience of DuraSafe into other career paths so a couple of us in medical school and, and um, in the field working as engineers as well. So why should people be excited about Demo Day? So it is truly a once in a lifetime experience that can serve as a unique foundation to being able to, to see your, your career or your project's dreams come to fruition. Well, good morning. It's good to see you all. My name is Todd Waldo. I am the founder of Hugh Helen LLC here in Richmond. I get to spend time with clients, think a lot about their overall business strategy, their operations, engineering solutions for them. But I also hang out here. You are in my classroom, so welcome to my classroom. Um, so I get to be the ideator in residence here with the Da Vinci Center, uh, teaching students, spending time with him. And so I'm just really glad to be back on the stage again, hosting Demo Day. So thank you so much for being here. This is a bit of what we're gonna do together, right? So we're gonna take a bit of a journey, right? We're gonna hear about some ideas. We're gonna hear about what's happening in our classrooms. We're gonna hear what's happening out in the community with our alumni, and then we've got our featured session. You all have a special role in this today. Not only are you going to be listening and paying attention, and you're gonna be inspired, you're gonna be intrigued. Some of you want, want to invest some money, but you will also get to vote. Yes, you have choice. You have choice, and you're going to help us give out those lovely awards, which are right over there. We're going to do that at the conclusion of our time. Does that sound dope, like something we can do together? So I do want to remind you of the atmosphere that's in this space. This is a place where we are giving grace. And what do I mean by that? You got some students who put in a lot of hard work to stand up on this stage. And man, that takes a lot of courage. You are beautiful people. Proof of good humans, but it takes a lot to stand up here. So we're going to give them some grace. 
they're going to do their best. And if they do, but, um, I, I, um, that's cool, right? If they need to start over, like, that's cool, right? If they're shaky a little bit, that's cool, right? Because there's grace, right? The other thing that I want you to do, I want you to listen really intently because I want you to tell people about what's happening here. Right? You might hear of a product of an, or an idea. You might hear of, of some work happening, and you're like, oh, I know somebody that can help. I know someone who is interested in that as well. I know someone that could be a good partner to this student. So go ahead and do that. Pull your phones out. Take some photos. Put this all over the internet. All right? Because we want folks to know what's happening over here. Does that sound dope? OK. So to get us started, every business, every person who ever started a company, man, they got an idea, right? They got an idea of something. And so what we want to do, we want to hold some space for some really cool ideas, all right? So we've got three that we're going to come to the stage, and you can hear more the, about their ideas. And that's how we're going to start our time today, all right? So please put your hands together and welcome to the stage. We're going to learn about radicals. Hi everyone, my name is Layla and I hope you enjoy my idea. Have you ever gone to a smoothie shop and didn't get your worth of what you paid? I started making smoothie bowls at home after I was tired of getting too much base and not enough toppings with other companies. Friends and family would beg me to make them quite often. With high interest, I started to bowls or purple in Spanish is a smoothie bowl business. This Help Yourself Mentality Smoothie Bar aims to not only make the smoothie bowl experience fun, but to also solve the small portion size issue that is seen often. With unlimited smoothie base and topping portions, customers will be extremely satisfied. We compete in the growing smoothie bowl company market. We are similar to Sweet Frog in design, but we have more options and a one-of-a-kind experience. Currently, Murad the Bowls is just an idea development stage, but I am looking for support for future success. I am beyond excited with this idea, and I want to hold on to that excitement and have you excited too. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lena. Next, let's hear about the math path. So I think a common experience that a lot of us share is trying to do math homework with our dad at the living room table. <laughs> and it's late at night, and both of you guys are getting super frustrated. And so you just start crying, <laughs> bursting into tears, waterworks in full effect. And so this is where the math path comes in. We offer specialized one-on-one -on -one and small group tutoring tailored to each of our students' needs. Now, our goal is not to put our competitors out of business. Our goal is to instill a sense of confidence and make dispel the myth that everybody is either born innately good or innately bad at math, because that's just not true. With the right help, anybody can excel at mathematics. And so we'll help you go from being a really confused student to an exceptional mathematician. Thank you for considering our services, and we hope that you schedule an appointment with us. Thank you. Let's hear from Christina MathPath. All right, we got one more idea for you. Let's hear all about Betty. All right. Um, hey friends, if you have been struggling to sleep comfortably in bed at night, you are not alone. There are more than 54 million American adults out there who are taller than six feet, and this number can be in the can even be higher if you count other countries. According to my research, the majority of apartment size in global cities are usually smaller than 700 square feet in size, and this measurement can even be smaller in different parts of the world. The most common bed size in big cities like this is usually a full or double size bed, which means if you are taller than six feet, you could barely fit in your bed and your legs would be hanging off it. At Betty, we believe that everyone deserves a 
comfortable sleep no matter how tall you are. That's why we created Betty, the bed extender. This convenient extender can be hooked on your bed frame to help extend the length of it and easily be fold down when you're not using it. Our goals are to create innovative design that helps save space and provide comfort in sleeping for tall people who are living in big cities around the world. So to all my tall friends, you don't need a new bed, save space and your money with Betty the Bed Extender. Thank you. Let's hear for Quinn and Betty the Tall Friend Project. All right, friends, humans, take out your cell phone. And I want you to go ahead and point it at that QR code. And you're going to get an opportunity to vote for which of these ideas you like the best. Is it Betty, the tall friend project, the math path, or Bradables? Vote, and I will give you 60 seconds. Imagine the Jeopardy theme is playing in the background or some other cool segue music to hold the time. <laughs> Click the QR code. Vote for your favorite. I'll give you 20 more seconds. It's also in the program if you're having challenges getting to the screen. Yeah? Do not get on the Wi Fi. Just use your own service provider. You know why? There's a bunch of people at the VCU right now. Folks across the street, the Siegel Center, and it's raining. It's the earth. So use your own service provider, Sprint, T Mobile. Well, Sprint's gone. So if you're on Sprint right now, that's the problem. AT&T, Cricket, Verizon. Yeah, that's all right. Do your best. This is not a quiz, folks. It's OK. Just do your best. All right, 10 more seconds. See a couple more folks still scanning. All right, wave at me if you got your vote in. OK, cool. Five, four, three, two, one. And if you're an RB person, you just thought of Jenna's Jackson. Okay. So let's move on from just hearing about ideas. Let's hear about what's happening actually in our classroom. So these are all students who are going to help us understand what's happening with entrepreneurship and innovation throughout our classrooms here at VCU. First up, we're going to hear about First G Fresh. Let's welcome them to the stage. So when Todd was talking about shaky people, I'm one of those. So just ahead. You got it, Jameer. You got it. <laughs> My name is Jameer Taylor, and I'm working on developing a platform called First G Fresh. First generation students are defined as the first people in their family to graduate college. Well, I'm the first person to apply, attend, graduate college, as well as go to grad school. So, I know, that's a big thing. So, um, as you can imagine, the fast, the fast FASFA application was very hard for me. Didn't know what I was doing at all. I was in a college prep program, which helped me figure out what career I wanted to do and, and where I wanted to further my education. But when it came to the actual FASFA process, I was kind of left on my own. So um, I wasn't able to get as much money as I wanted. I made a mistake, and it wasn't until a month before graduation that I realized that it was a mistake. And by the time I was able to fix it, I was left with the bottom of the barrel. So imagine filing your taxes for the first time, no TurboTax, no H&R Block, and you forgot your W-2s. That was basically my situation, was stuck. So I want to prevent that from happening to other students. I conducted a small survey. Um, pretty much everyone agreed that the FAFSA process is the hardest process of the college prep process as a total, um, especially deadlines, 
understanding the actual terminology of the application as well as um, just having your paperwork on time and everything like that. Another thing that came up was that people would like to see FAFSA standardized in schools. They would like to see it in a class setting or one-on-one -on -one with teachers, which I agree with as well. According to a 2021 FAFSA uh, report, 47% of FAFSA applicants were first-generation students. So that's a pretty, a pretty big amount. Um, and that's their most recent. So what I want to do is provide a navigation tool for students to maximize the use of free federal funds, emphasis on free. Um, we wanna help students get more money while also relieving the stress of preparing for college because money is a lot of people's worries. So this brings me to my ask. I would like to ask for $1,000 to start a pilot program at Elmore High School in Charlottesville, Virginia, where I have a couple connections at. Uh, I would like to sit with students and go through their senior process to understand my users' needs and create a better uh, journey map as well as an improved prototype. So thank you. Let's hear from Jamira. Good job. One of our grad students here in our Masters of Product Innovation. So often entrepreneurs, they come up with a solution for a problem that they experience themselves. Like, I don't want anybody else to experience this. And so they throw themselves into it and solve for them. It's a great example of that. Next up, we got a team of undergraduate students from the Robinson School. All right, we got love for Robinson School. All right. Let's hear all about Nation's Foundation Creator Law. Good morning, everyone. We are the Nation's Foundation, and today we're going to be discussing our project work from this semester and what we hope to do with it in the future. So let's begin. My name is Jackson Amir Shahi. I'm our account manager. I'm Abby Stewart. I'm our strategist. And I'm Rachel Spiller, our copywriter. So before we get into the campaign that we've worked on this past semester, we want to give you a little bit of background to understand the importance of this mission. So currently, for HIV and STI rates in Virginia, there are over 5,300 Richmond residents living with HIV. And in 2020, there were 628 new HIV diagnoses statewide. Additionally, 40% of new HIV infections are spread by those who don't even know that they are infected. Additionally, Virginia rates third nationally in terms of rate increases of chlamydia in seniors. So that's why organizations like the Nations Foundation are so integral to this community. Zakia McKenzie is the founder of Nations Foundation. She is the former Miss Gay Black America. And in 2018, Equality Virginia named her an outstanding Virginian. She has a passion for destigmatizing HIV and STIs after the loss of a close friend to HIV. The Nations Foundation offers a mobile testing unit where you're able to go and easily get tested wherever you may need to be. Additionally, the Nations Foundation has a food pantry which will help those in need and has many programs that are for trans and non-binary individuals and someone who may have just recently gotten HIV diagnosis. Throughout the semester, we work closely with Nations to develop a marketing campaign that fits into their brand voice and raises awareness in the Richmond LGBTQ community. This has included a social revamp as well as updated print materials and merchandise. So as far as what we need and what we're hoping to gain from this experience, we are asking for $7,000 so that we can take this project to the next level. As students, we are a little limited in terms of what we have available in the classroom. So after we've come up with all this amazing print material for them, we're asking for $2,000 so that we can print these marketing materials for them so that we can raise their public awareness to a new level. Additionally, we're asking for $5,000 so we can resupply their food pantry for them. Our marketing materials include updated business cards, as well as these trifold brochures that ensure that all of the benefits of nations can be found in one place. We've also created t-shirts and stickers, which are essential to raising funds for nations and contributing to public awareness. As far as their food pantry, when we talked to Zakia, she did share that it is their most accessed community service. And as I'm sure we're all very familiar with right now, grocery costs just continue to skyrocket. So this is a great opportunity for us to come in outside of the classroom, get those groceries for them and resupply their food pantry. The average cost of food right now in Virginia is estimated to be $311 per month per person and 29,000 Richmond residents have low supermarket access. 
Of that 29,000, 84% of those residents are also living in low-income communities. So they have little access to supermarkets, and even if they can get in there, they have low income, so it is difficult with the rising cost of groceries. And that is why Nations Foundation is so integral, and we hope that you'll help us support their mission. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Again, be listening you might hear an opportunity for you to make an investment as something that really sparks your interest. All right, you're hearing some masks up here from really good things. Last, our third one, we're going to hear from Jillian, an undergraduate student studying bioinformatics. Yeah. Here at VCU Life Science, let's learn all about memo risk. <laughs> Apparently it's your birthday, happy birthday. My birthday. <laughs> Hello and good morning. I'm Jillian and this is Sarwat. And this, <laughs> this is Janice. Janice is a 56 year old flight attendant from Atlanta, Georgia. She lives with her three kids and her dog Pickles. Janice enjoys attending her tennis club every week and spending time with her daughters. She also prides herself in being there for her family and everyone who needs her. While Janice is preparing for her upcoming tennis championship, she notices a pain radiating from her right underarm. Janice brushes this off as every good tennis player experiences some pain every once in a while. She isn't able to meet with her doctor for the next three months due to availability issues. The busy season is approaching, and as summer uh, gets closer, so does flight season. She's looking to pick up some extra shifts in order to prepare for her daughter's upcoming birthday. When Janice finally gets back from traveling all around the world, she's finally able to get in with her doctor for her yearly well woman's exam. During the mammogram portion of the exam, her doctor finds a large lump in her right breast and Janice is diagnosed with stage three breast cancer. Janice is immediately confused, frustrated, and upset. If she had known the signs or the symptoms or had been able to get in earlier with her doctor, the advancement of this disease might have been able to have been prevented. She thinks about her daughters, could they also be at risk for developing breast cancer? Janice is like millions of people across the world. One in eight women will be diagnosed with breast cancer and one in 833 men will be diagnosed at some point in their lives. Current solutions are failing. Inaccessibility to healthcare leads to delayed diagnosis and a delay of just six weeks leads to larger tumor sizes and high incidence rates of metastatic breast cancer. Over half the world's population doesn't have access to essential healthcare services, and next to zero have access to healthcare catered to their individual genetic needs. We're two bioinformatics students, we're two bioinformaticians, and we're first generation college students that come from low income families, so we understand healthcare disparities in America firsthand. One day, we could be the one in eight, just like Janice. We've developed Mammo Risk to bring personalized healthcare needs into the hands of the patient. Our tool asks demographic, behavioral, and genetic questions to complete to compile a risk score and a subsequent risk category. If Janice had Mammo Risk, her risk category could have provide her, provided her with essential recommendations based on the severity of her risk that was outputted. This includes scheduling a telehealth visit with a mid-level provider that could have gotten her in sooner, or how to conduct a proper self breast exam. Janice's daughters would also benefit from using Mammo Risk. Now that they know that breast cancer runs just for just one generation away from them, they're at high risk and they'll be able to know what to look out for with what the tool suggests. We're looking to learn from software engineers, public health experts, and people in the biotech industry to continue the development of this tool. We envision creating an app that makes scheduling a telehealth appointment easy and accessible. We want to provide demonstrations to, at the, to everyone of how to actually conduct a proper self-breast exam. Ultimately, we want to revolutionize the future of medicine. Know your risk and protect your future with Mammo Risk. Thank you so very much. All right, folks, so we're gonna do it again, all right? So between the screen, what's in your program, 
or like get the QR code, copy paste the link and meet a new friend next to you and text it to them by any means necessary. We want you to pick between Memo Risk, Nations Foundation, First G Fresh, this really important work that's happening in our classrooms, students holding on to their own lived experiences, and then solving for that with the work they're doing in our classrooms. So while you all are deciding on your favorite, we have some judges with us that are gonna help us decide what kind of investment we can make. We've got some wonderful sponsors and wonderful partners that come alongside of the Da Vinci Center here at VCU. And so these judges help us think through what could be really helpful to the pitches that we're hearing today. So let me introduce, they are all sitting over here looking so lovely. So thank you for being here. We have from CarMax product designer, Cameron Bradley is here. Thank you so much for being our judge. From a Chi principal product manager, Travis Brooklyn is here. Thank you, Travis. From Mr. Hello, head of product and customer success, Mary Tracy Graham is here. From Capital One, UX UI designer. Uh, Tyrone Fry is in the building. <laughs> He's got some friends. And from Capital One, we have Christy Callis, Director, Business Analytics and Data Governance and Senior Manager. And Capital One is our title sponsor. So thank you to Capital One. Let's hear for Capital One. And Christy, if you would, I'd love to have you say a few words to us here this morning. Let's hear for Christy. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm Christy Callis. Um, before I tell you a little bit about myself and about Capital One, I just wanted to say how impressed I am so far by just the opening pitches. Not only can you tell the passion that these folks have in their products, but also their ability to present that in front of an audience is just beyond impressive. So thanks to everyone who's gone so far. I look forward to the pitches later today. Um, a little bit about myself. So I grew up in Northern Virginia. I am a first generation college graduate as well in my family. And um, throughout the course of my career, I landed upon Richmond about nine and a half years ago to work for Capital One. I started out in supplier management and procurement, supporting our digital suppliers out on the West Coast. I did a stint in our workplace solutions department, which is like corporate real estate, working on our amenity strategies before stumbling upon my role as a director of data governance in our enterprise products and experience department. I'd like to say that my career was intentional and that I um, calculated every step, but I didn't. Um, I really just tried to focus on where were the trends going? Where could I really challenge and push myself from a learning perspective? And how do I keep up with where the company is going as whole? Stepping back a little bit about Capital One. Uh, we are in a unique situation where we're still founder led. So Rich Fairbank started the company about 29 years ago. It'll be 29 years this summer. And um, about nine or 10 years ago is really where he made the declaration of changing banking for good. And with this mission, um, there was a, a big transformation of not being a bank company that does tech, but being a tech company that does banking. And there was a significant investment in product, in technology, in engineering, designers, all of that, to where we can continue to push forward on our tech journey and build products, both for our external customers, but also for our internal associates as well, that really focused on human-centered design and um, could set us apart from the other financial services institutes out there. Um, about 18 months ago or so, maybe a little bit less, we hired our first chief product officer, Rob Pulciani, who has brought just an enormous amount of, of outcome to our company in terms of product and how we've elevated that role, um, bringing forth new competencies for us to focus on and really giving product and designers a platform to operate um, within our company. 
Within Capital One, we have roughly 3,000 or so product and design associates, about three times that much on the tech and engineering side to support those product teams. So this is, this is the direction of our company. Product design and engineering is extremely important to where we're going with our mission and how we're going to change banking for good. Lastly, I'd like to say thanks to Garrett and the Da Vinci Center. Uh, we've had a, a great relationship with them since 2009. Not only do we benefit from the talent that comes to Capital One from the Da Vinci Center, but also just the ability to support the community and, um, and product and design space in general. It's been a phenomenal relationship. So thanks everyone who, who came out today, who came out from Capital One especially, and I look forward to the pitches this afternoon and, and participating as a judge. So thank you. <laughs> thank you, Christy. And thanks again to Capital One. So in our video, you heard a little bit about our students as they have moved on and they're out in the world doing things. And so we want to hold some space here today to hear what's happening with our alumni. So now you get to hear from three about the work that they are doing. We're going to get started with Otherwise. Aliyah's here. An alum of our Shift Retail Lab and Demo Day as well. So let's hear it for Leah as we learn about Otherwise. Hello, party people. All right. So my name is Aaliyah, and I have come here to vent about why I hate the hiring process. So for context, I graduated from VCU last May. At my ceremony, I counted a dozen of these grad caps, which is obviously a really big problem. So let's, let's take a for instance, right? Look around the room, look at all the Da Vinci students in this room, right? Every Da Vinci student come, comes here looking for entrepreneurial, innovative careers. However, the innovative startups that we wanna work at are still using really antiquated hiring methods to actually vet for talent. I mean, like, how am I supposed to show someone that I'm ambitious based on this slip of paper? In fact, you know what? Screw that! What if there was a way <laughs> to show, not tell, your skills to employers? To fix this, Otterwise helps employers vet for innovative skills by hosting pre-hire projects where talent and teams can collaborate towards one common goal. So in as little as 24 hours, depending on the sprint, employers get to hire fast, hire once. Candidates can test their career paths, stop applying to a million places, and get paid for their work while they do it. The idea was what if we got rid of dull resumes and nerve-wracking interviews and just put people in a room together and just let them solve a problem because that's what they're going to be doing in the workplace anyways. Think about what skills you could vet that you'd never get from an interview or what you could learn about a company's culture that you would never get without having worked there. In this way, Otterwise is essentially the try before you buy of hiring. Because, I mean, like worst case scenario, right? Students are still walking away, being paid for their work. They've done impactful work for a startup. It goes on their portfolio. Best case scenario, they're forming this working relationship with an employer, and they know that they're going to be providing value to each other's journeys. The employers are hiring with a lot less risk, knowing those skills ahead of time. We also help both candidates and employers actually provide insights to what they can do better in their talent strategy or their job search strategy. And really us being able to provide these insights is one of the biggest benefits that our current stakeholders are really, really hungry for because it's what sets us apart. We live in a world where candidates are not getting feedback and employers are fighting over creative talent that won't be replaced by the next big wave of AI. Otherwise, as a third party, we get to intervene and provide you specialized insights on what you can do to stand out in the new job market, all without costing startups any extra time or money lost to hiring and training efforts. Currently, we are developing our MVP in collaboration with a YC-backed startup. It's on the screen. Um, we're also hoping to evolve this into a digital service um, where it's a platform where the insights can actually be an automated service. But until we get to that point, 
We are currently looking to raise about 5K just to help us with some startup and MVP costs and also to connect with as many startups and talent individuals as possible. So if this sounds like you, this is me putting out the bat signal. Scan the QR code on the screen. You might also win a prize, by the way. You can also help us name the little, little otter mascot that we have going on. And until then, I can't wait to shape the future with me, you and get rid of these for good. Thanks. Let's hear for Aaliyah and Otterwise. Next, we're bringing Rob back, an alum who's working on his app that is in beta testing right now. So let's hear all about Emotit. Hello, my name is Rob Dennison. I'm a Richmond native and a graduate of the VC School of Computer Science, and I'm here to present Emotit, a chat app built for a crowd. I've been a Rams basketball fan my entire life, so from games back at the Coliseum to Havoc at the Stew, I love all the different aspects of the VCU fan experience. I mean, you have your best buddies sitting beside you, cracking jokes and cheering. You have the chants, you have the band, you have the roar of the crowd. And it was experiences like these that inspired me to create Emotit, a chat app to designed to bring those same levels of excitement and engagement to everyone watching at home. You see, there is so much untapped potential in the intersection between, oh, oh there we go. There's so much untapped potential in the intersection between our mobile phone use and watching live TV. Uh, most of us, 94% of us, are watching TV with a smartphone within reach. And so we are checking our socials, we're texting, we're emailing, but there's actually very few apps that are intentionally designed for this intersection of live TV to complement and enhance that experience. So how are we doing it at Emotive? The first thing that we did is we made an experience on a large scale chat. We wanted a messaging system that got better the more people joined rather than getting chaotically out of control. The second piece is expression. We've made it easy to instantly react with a variety of emojis. Think of this as the roar of the crowd. Third, engagement. As the event progresses, trivia, mini games, real life giveaways will all do things to reward you for your engagement rather than simply just using you for your content like so many other social platforms do today. Just like at a VCU game, we want to be amazing hosts, giving away free swag and celebrating our attendees. As a note, everything that you see here are direct screenshots. Um, our app is in beta and we have public events weekly. So how does this make money? Again, this is where intentional design for the intersection between mobile phone use and TV comes back into play. Instead of, per, we tune out of a TV commercial within three seconds. So why would we put a banner ad that's gonna be just duplicative and ignored on our app? The instead, what we're doing is allowing advertisers to provide real life actions that actually complement the commercial that's playing on the TV. So in this example, a buy now button. This model, we believe, will significantly improve the value of that social market and provide defensible partnerships as we scale. Partnerships will be key, which is why I'm here today. So first of all, I'm looking for product ambassadors that will help us promote and give feedback on our public events. Second, I would like Emotit to be the official chat app for VCU basketball in the upcoming season. The app was born in the energy and the excitement of the stew, and I can think of no better place for it to continue its journey than in the very fan base that inspired it. Thank you. Let's hear it for Rob and emote it. We've got one more to welcome back. This is another demo day in Shift Retail Lab alum. Yosef is back. We're gonna hear about the C'est la vie vegan charcuterie packs. Let's hear it for Joseph. All right, hi everyone. My name is Joseph. <laughs> I've been a vegan for over nine years now, and I'm also the founder and owner of C'est la vie. 
So I want to start actually with uh, last year, with a recap of 22. Of April 22, I was standing here pitching about the business idea I had, and I actually got a funding from the Da Vinci Center and to start a business. And thanks to that funding, I was able to get over $10,000 in sales just between the months of July to December, which is over 1,500 charcuterie packs sold to over 500 customers, solely in the Richmond area. And uh, yeah, and how we did that? We did that basically by selling vegan charcuterie packs. Selavi charcuterie packs are uh, the perfect snack for people, for vegans, vegetarians, and eco-conscious consumers who wants to avoid the uh, uh, animal-based products and that packed in plastic, but giving them a, a product that is fully compostable, high in protein, and most importantly, plant-based. Currently in the US alone, there are 19.9 million vegans, which is a 500% increase compared to 2014. On top of that, 202.9 million US consumers ready sustainability as an important criteria before they purchase a product. Our target market more specifically is what I like to call the busy but healthy lifestyle consumers. These are parents that have full-time jobs, have two to three kids, all day busy with their kids and their, and their life, <laughs> pretty much. And they're looking for a, uh, a snack that is both compostable, sustainable, and healthy to power up throughout their day. Our competition. So as of, this, uh, as of September 22, just last year, a new competitor joined the market called Mighty Yum. They make, as they look and it sounds, vegan Lunchables. Same flavor, same packaging. And now, who wants to take a Lunchable to a picnic with friends and family? <laughs> And that's why how we differentiate ourselves. Our charcuterie packs are targeted for adults. Uh, they're 100% vegan, school safe, nut free, non GMO, high in protein, and good source of fiber and iron as well. And uh, how we gonna how we basically generate uh, revenue? As I said last year, we we're focusing mostly on farmers markets and festivals. So I was selling each for charcuterie packs by myself. This year, we're focusing on e-commerce with our new launch website, as well as all selling to grocery stores and airports as well. Today, we ask for $25,000, and that's basically, uh, like I said, last year, I got the machine to start the, the business, and this uh, shelf life for the packs were only seven days. I already purchased a machine that can get this shelf life up to three months. With the money I need today is basically to get the inventory in, order all of the supplies, and start selling the product. And if there is only one thing I want you all to take from here today is that we all have the power to save lives, just one snack at a time. So snack for life, snack c'est la vie. Thank you. Let's hear for Yosef. All right, you all are pros at this point. You know what to do. Take your phones out or look in the program if you want to do it that way or share the link with your neighbor. Whatever works, we're going to scan the code and you are going to place a vote for say la vie, vegan charcuterie backs, emote it, or for otherwise. Again, I'm really glad to be added in this opportunity to hear about our alumni. The work we, we do here at Dimitri doesn't stop here in the classroom. It does not stop with graduation. It carries forward into their life and into their career. And so it's beautiful to see some students take a big risk and saying, this thing that I started, this thing that I was inspired to do, I'm going to keep that going and flow that into my life and career. So glad that we were a part of that. And again, as you've heard today, there's lots of opportunity for you, not you're just yourself, invest your time, your effort, your energy, your money, but also please share with others that you think would be interested. Okay. We've got an event coming up here in Richmond that we want you to know about. You can scan a QR code and learn more. And Mary and Travis are gonna come up and tell us all about Product Fest RVA. selfie with me and Mary and you all in the background so if you don't mind just everybody look super excited <laughs> like excited as you can possibly be ready three two one very nice very good excited well done <laughs> small in the picture but well done um, so uh, Mary and I last year along with a, a couple of the friends of ours we started this thing called product fest and it's kind of an extension of what this school does uh, but in you know once you leave school 
So it's one day uh, conference. <clears throat> Last year it was at the Science Museum. This year it's going to be at the um, Dominion Energy Center, which is uh, right downtown, just a few blocks away from here. Uh, it's May 24th, and uh, we do have student rates. Tickets are on sale now. Uh, we're really, really excited. It's kind of a party celebrating all of what product's all about. We learn about product. We get to mingle with other product people, design people, uh, agile people, and a lot of students from VCU programs and from the U of R programs. And I'm really excited. Hopefully, we'll see a bunch of you guys there. It's going to be an amazing one-day event on May 24th. And Mary's going to tell you a little bit about uh, some of the specifics, specifics of what you'll see. Thank you, Travis. So uh, again, my name is Mary Glarum. I am on the volunteer committee with Travis. And Product Fest is a partnership with the Richmond Technology Council. Um, this is our second year. We sold out at 350 attendees last year, and we're anticipating up to 500 this year. Um, Product Fest is very intentionally named because it's not just a professional development conference. It is a festival and a celebration of the practice of product management. So much so that after our programming during the day, we actually have a permit to shut down the city block in front of Dominion Energy Center and have a street party starting around 3.30. So, <laughs> so get your ticket. Um, regarding this year's speaker lineup, I am so proud and so fortunate to have been involved with this year's content programming. Um, one of the individuals that I actually met last year by being here at Demo Day is going to be on our stage. You saw him in the video. His name is Julian Renniger. I was so inspired by him and his presentation here last year that I, invent, I invited him to sit on an RVA Founders startup panel, and that is going to be our morning keynote this year. He's going to be on stage to share his inspiration and his story amongst other RVA Founders. We have pulled in other speakers from around the country. Um, Anthony Pegg, who is the VP of Product Management from Fandom, is coming in from Philadelphia. We have um, speakers from Capital One, CarMax. We have a fantastic panel lined up for the con to have an inspiring and a little bit Wild West, quite frankly, conversation about AI and product management. And what does that mean? Because AI, as you guys know, is changing every day, every hour as we speak. So we would be remiss if we didn't have a session to talk about that and address AI from a product perspective this year. And probably what I'm most proud of this year is not just the incorporation of our local talent like Julian and the folks from Capital One and CarMax, but we also, I'm not quite sure how we did this, Travis, but um, for those of you that know the name Marty Kagan, he is the founder of Silicon Valley Product Group out in San Francisco. Um, he is not able to join us in person, but he is joining us virtually this year on stage. He is going to be part of a fireside chat with Ann Yager from CarMax. And he, Marty, is going to be giving and sharing his guidance and his principles, not just about product leadership, but, he is all, but we are also giving our entire audience the opportunity to submit their questions to Marty and give access to his expertise on stage. So um, again, I couldn't be more proud. And um, I'm so hopeful that all of you can come and participate and take advantage of this opportunity. And on a personal note, um, I just wanted to thank Travis for allowing me to get involved with this, with the product community in Richmond. And I wanted to thank uh, Garrett Westlake and everybody else at VCU Da Vinci for allowing me to come into your community and to participate in this program, because I am so incredibly fortunate to be a part of your community. So thank you. Let's see it from Mary and Travis. Thank you so much. So there is information in the program. There's a QR code there. So scan that and learn more and show up for Product Fest. All right. Human beings. Beautiful human beings. Are you ready for our seven featured pitches? <laughs> human beings. Here at the Da Vinci Center, Demo Day 2023, on a lovely rainy day in Richmond, Virginia. Are you ready for our seven featured pitches? That feels really good. Let's get it started. We are going to hear all about 
Malik, who is a pre-med student, passionate about skincare. Ladies and gentlemen, good botanicals. Hello, everybody. Hi, my name is Malik Middleton. I'm the founder, CEO, and everything in between of Good Botanicals. Simple and natural, what aren't we good for? So I'm going to take some of us back, and for some of us, way back to our prepubescent years. Growing up with acne and sensitive skin, I always had a problem trying to find a product that worked for me. For I was in the aisles, I would always pick up something that would have complex chemicals that I could never pronounce. And if I couldn't pronounce it, well, I was going to put that on my skin. Also, the packaging or the product itself was never environmentally friendly. What was up with that? And on top of it, being a young black man, I never found myself properly represented in any skincare brand. So my solution was coming up with Good Botanicals. It's an all-natural skincare line that uses phytochemicals, carrier oils, and other essential oils to combat common skincare ailments. We only use simple ingredients. That means no alcohols, no chemicals, and stuff that you can actually pronounce. We're environmentally conscious in every step of the way, from the packaging to the shipping materials and everything in between. On top of it, we are inclusive. We feel that everybody should see themselves being used and using our products. So let's talk about the science. I actually graduated my degree in biology, entrepreneurship, and pre-medicine from JMU. And during my time there, I spent time doing research on phytochemicals and the effect of those on the microbiome of the face. So with that, I created my own procedure that's actually able to be patented. So hopefully, with some eyes help today, I can move forward with that process. So we offer three products with good botanicals. On our left side, you see our scrubber scrub. In the middle, you see our all over your body butter, our oily wash. On the right side, you see our all over your body butter. Some people in the crowd can tell you how amazing our products are. <laughs> so talking about a business, we got to talk about money, right? So online perfume and cosmetic sales brought in $12 billion in revenue, with 51.9% of that market being skincare. So this is a great avenue for us to check out first. After that, beauty, cosmetic, and fragrance, think of your storefronts like Ulta, brought in $25.6 billion in revenue. It's a great avenue for us to jump into afterwards. Our target market is going to be initially millennials and Gen Zs, as they make up 23.9% of the market in the largest growing segment. We love our skincare. But it's important to note that everybody who wants natural products should see themselves represented in our brand. No matter their shape, colors, age, etc., they should feel included. So what's the next steps here? With Good Botanicals, I've been working with the Da Vinci Center to come up with our new spring launch. It's been awesome, so thank you to the interns. We got four ounce jars coming out soon, listening to all of our consumers. They love our products and they want more. We're improving our production and scaling up, doing our summer botanical growth to produce stuff locally here in Richmond, and our community outreach stuff as well. We're connecting with local businesses to move towards retail, and we're always learning and growing more. Our ask is for mentorship and funding as we move forward trying to find a patent turning and trademarking, trying to find space to produce our product and community outreach as well, and our summer botanical growth. Once again, my name is Malik Milton. I'm the founder, CEO, and everything in between. You can scan that QR code to go buy our products today or check us out today in Shift. We have a new product, the All Over Your Body Butter, that's specifically for Demo Day Scent. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you. One more time, let's hear it for Malik and Good Botanicals. Next, Jack is here, a grad student in a Master's of Product Information program. He's on a mission to make our tooling experiences pleasant for absolutely everyone. Humans, make some noise for Toe Ninja. There we go. All right, hello everybody. Uh, my name is Jack Oppenheim. I'm the founder and CEO of Toe Ninja. And today I'm gonna start off with a few questions. Uh, but first, let me see a show of hands. How many of you drove here today? Great, most of you. Uh, now how would you feel if after today's event, you're well, running back to your car so you don't get wet, you're ready to go home, but it's gone, right? Would you be startled, worried, angry even, pissed? And what would you do? Would you call a friend or you know, Google tow companies near me? Or even call the police? <laughs> um, well, you're not alone in this situation. Uh, this is exactly what happened to me. And I started Tow Ninja after I myself was towed while out on a date. The, ex <laughs> the experience was horrible. And I felt like such an idiot because what was a great night ended up costing me a lot of time, money, and headache. And so I went back to the drawing board and I said, man, I can't be the only one experiencing this. 
And what I found out was that the average college student has a one in four chance of being towed every single year they're on campus. And so with that, I'm proud to introduce you today to Tow Ninja. We are the Tow Ninja. Uh, we are the first ever platform designed to simplify the towing process by providing transparency and equitable solutions for everyone involved. We are a two-sided marketplace that uh, facilitates um, communications for both vehicle owners and tow truck companies, and we are a subscription-based service for them as well. For tow companies, we provide them with all the tools they need to report and monitor tows, as well as log tows into the system. But for vehicle owners, we offer a wide range of services, starting with our search and notification features, where we allow you to easily locate and pay for your towed vehicle at your own convenience. And additionally, we have a density map showing you where all the cars in your area are being ticketed and towed from within the last 24 hours. But what our members are most excited for is our Drop Now feature. With Drop Now, we allow you to prevent yourself from being in towed in the first place. Instead of being towed because you're parked illegally, you, sim you simply pay half the tow price, but get 30 minutes to actually get up and move your vehicle before it's taken away. <laughs> Thus, we afford our members the opportunity to never be towed again. And so our traction thus far has us operating in the city of Harrisonburg, where we've received an endorsement to be the official standard for reporting and monitoring uh, tows across the city. And today, I'm here asking for $15,000 to help us implement and develop our payment feature, so that way we can start beginning, uh, excuse me, that way we can start generating revenue off of every single tow that's processed through our system. But in short, Tow Ninja is a revolutionary platform built on the principles of transparency and equitability for everyone in the system. And we use human-centered design to deliver the best end user experience possible for all of our users. Thank you for considering Tow Ninja, and we look forward to coming to a community and city near you. One more time, let's hear it for Jack and Tow Ninja. Next. Zachariah is coming, an engineering undergrad studying computer science, striving to solve the challenge of helping businesses stay competitive by adapting emerging technologies. Everyone, please welcome Zachariah as we learn about Fusion AI Dynamics. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Zachariah, a computer scientist and founder of Fusion AI Dynamics. Folks, we have a big problem. The digital era has brought with it rapid advancements in technology, leaving many businesses struggling to adapt and stay competitive. The truth is, over one third of businesses have shut their doors since COVID-19, and over a quarter still don't have a website to this day but today, I stand before you to introduce a revolutionary solution, Fusion AI Dynamics. Our mission here at Fusion AI Dynamics is to ensure that no company is left behind in the digital age. As an IT consulting firm, a core value of ours is putting people first and uh, by creating intuitive and tailored solutions with lifetime support and deliverable products within 30 days. Our competitive pricing models include an initiation charge, depending on the size and scope of the service, along with either the option to have us as a 5% partial owner of the business, or an 8% charge based on the revenue growth since initiation on a monthly subscription model. At Fusion AI Dynamics, we've assembled a team of visionaries, computer scientists and UX UI designers working in tandem to bring you the ultimate growth partner. We're offering AI-driven solutions for small to medium-sized businesses, creating custom websites, marketing campaigns, and robust business infrastructure that will put you ahead of the competition. By leveraging open source AI technology, we can offer cost-effective and efficient solutions tailored to your unique business needs. Our focus areas include business infrastructure, marketing, and customer relationship management. We will help you build robust, scalable, and reliable IT infrastructure, launch innovative and data-driven marketing campaigns, and enhance customer experiences with personalized CRM systems. And our journey doesn't end here. 
The future of AI dynamics is filled with expansion and to new industries, immersion in the Richmond area, along with continued innovation and adaptation to stay ahead of the curve. Now, I do have a surprise for you all today. To show you our commitment to your success, we're offering the two best suited companies here today two months of free service. That's right, two months to experience the transformative power of AI-driven solutions and the impact it can have on your business. Imagine the possibilities as we work together to harness the power of AI and transform your business into a digital powerhouse. So who's going to be among the first to join me in the AI revolution? Thank you. Let's hear it for Zachariah. Next, Susan is here, a graduate student in the Master of the Product Innovation Program, exploring how we might reduce the risk of life-threatening vehicle accidents and permanent eye damage due to bright sunlight. All of you beautiful people in the room, please welcome Susan as we learn about Polarizer. Thank you so much for taking some time to hear about the Polo Visor. As Todd said, my name is Susan Lewis. I am a current MPI student here, and I am excited to share my story. If I can get the clicker to work. Oh, other green button. OK. <laughs> In a design thinking workshop here at the Da Vinci Center, I started to craft my how might we statement. On a sticky note, I wrote, how might we reduce the risk of light-threatening vehicle accidents? I meant to write life threatening. But this accidental pun made me pause as I concluded that both can work. You see, I was having this recurring problem driving to and from work for an approach a stoplight and it would be at the exact same perspective as the sun. And I was forced to make a choice to stare blindly at a stoplight or use my car visor and not see that stoplight. Then I started noticing the behavior of other drivers when they experienced this problem that Sometimes they weren't relying on the stoplight for direction, but rather the cars around them. I'm not the first to wonder about the impact that bright sunlight has on driver safety. Researchers published findings where they compared the weather conditions for when these life-threatening accidents occurred. They found that driving during bright sunlight increased this risk by 16%, and that was actually greater than inclement weather. Bright sunlight can cause a faulty aerial perspective, also known as Rayleigh effect, where travel velocity feels deceptively slow and drivers compensate by accelerating. So in addition to having reduced visibility due to glare, drivers are more likely to speed in bright sunlight. They concluded that in one's lifetime, there's a 57% risk of being involved in a life-threatening car accident. This serious problem impacts 76% of the US population. Customer segments include daily commuters, student drivers, senior drivers, and professional drivers. The automotive aftermarket has a projected growth of 4% and is already valued at 427 billion globally. There are several competitor products out there. In fact, I've got four on my display today. So in addition to testing my own prototypes, I've tested these products. And I've spent a lot of time reading Amazon reviews, but I have to say, this one here at the bottom, it really stuck for me. This guy bought four of the same visor, and all of them had the same problem with falling. And he was really frustrated because he wants it to work. He goes on to say, the company really needs to fix this design flaw. I intend to. <laughs> I'm daring the polo visor to achieve a new safety standard. The polo visor has two sliding doors on the left and right side that when opened reveal a UV polarized screen. Now drivers have a tinted window within their car visor so they can still protect their eyes without sacrificing their visibility. I want it to be safer for drivers and for pedestrians. At this stage, I'm looking for resources for 3D printing and to scale testing. I'm looking to form key partnerships to help craft the engineering components. Thank you so much for this opportunity, and I'm really excited for your feedback. Let's hear it for Susan and Polarizer. Doing all right? 
Just check it in. We got three more. I'm good. Thank you for asking. I appreciate it. No one ever asked the host if he's doing okay. I appreciate that. Jordan is here, an undergraduate working and on interdis interdisciplinary studies that got stuck in my mouth, focusing on advanced media production. He's going to present his vision of creating label onboarding and leveraging blockchain technology. Beautiful people, please hear it for Jordan and eight books. Hello, hello, thank you for having me. I am Jordan Reinick. And I'm Pete Rango. And we are exploring co-creation at the intersection of art and technology with ABUS. Yeah, so uh, ABUS is a label focused on co-creation at the intersection of tech and art. Uh, you guys may have heard about Web3. Uh, can you raise your hand if you have a crypto wallet? All right, all right. Actually, that's more than I would expect, honestly. Uh, so you may have heard Web3, and, and, and you relate that to like jargon like crypto or uh, NFTs, uh, distributed ledgers, right? Um, but it's a bit more than that. It's a revolution, revolutionary technology, um, and it gives the power back to you, right? Um, Jordan? Yeah, so uh, I'm Jordan Reinick. I am about to graduate in a week. But I'm an artist from Richmond, Virginia. If you've been to a bar in Richmond on the weekend, I, you've probably seen me or heard me play. But um, I've also had a lot of fun being a songwriter f uh, briefly for Sony. And uh, I've developed under Pete Rango and gotten into Web3 technology and figuring out how we can really storytell with these tools and have more equity in our creative projects. Yeah, so I'm Pete Rango. I have over 10 years of experience working with different labels in the art artist uh, Artists, uh, oh my gosh, <laughs> I've <laughs> over 10 years working with artists. Um, I've been focused on artist development, artist education. Uh, I've, I've came into Web3 about three years ago, um, and my first experience was with BeatStyle. Um, when I came across BeatStyle, it was a, just a group of collectors that wanted to create new tech and onboard the ne next creative economy, right? Um, it was a, a group of collectors like um, Snoop Dogg's manager, um, we had Grimes' manager. We had uh, Richard Chen, who's part of Manifold. Just like a, a very eclectic group of, of people. And I was very interested to see what they were doing in, in Web3. Um, fast forward now, I, I, I recently left uh, BeatStyle just because I think there's a lot of pitfalls uh, and a lot of things we still have to understand about the culture. However, there's a lot of interesting things with the technology, right? Um, so I'm very interested to see what we could do with the, with the tech when it comes to like community creation and community onboarding. Yeah, so the solution for this is 8Bus, which is a multimedia label that embraces this intersection of art and tech. And we're really trying to uh, like have more um, immersive experiences than just your traditional make a single, make a music video, promote on TikTok. And you know, these musicians are only seeing few cents for this, and it's not a way to live. And there's also a big opportunity to have fans be able to co-create and co-own in these projects to be able to benefit from their success over time. So. The main thing, the really fun thing about uh, 8 Bus is it, the studio is mobile and it has, it's kind of like I've taken influence from Da Vinci's workshop experience and you know, I've, I've loved being on, on TV sets and doing like um, advanced media production, so I love everything. So to be able to have a place where you can really create a multimedia idea quickly and efficiently with the team and collaborate on the road is really awesome and it all would cost less than like a traditional artist development deal from a, uh, from a label. So here is uh, some, some pictures from Woods and Locks. It's a brand center alum in Richmond, and she make, does amazing work building Airstreams for brand experiences. And, um, and this is just right in, in Scott's edition. And I've been talking, and she's been advising. And it's, you know, it's, it's very doable to do what we're trying to do. So the, to talk more about these campaigns, it's really about disrupting previous models and mediums of entertainment. Like instead of a, uh, an album, like what does it look like if an artist wants to make a video game where you discover their music through this video game and you can play through it? Or it might be something different with physical merchandise that's 3D printed or something and it's a gamified sort of situation. But we're just trying to storytell in different ways in different campaigns. But another aspect is trustless co-creation, which is what blockchain allows. I'll have you talk about that. Yeah, historically, trust in society comes from subjective sources, right? So from personal collect connections, platforms, and institutions. So at its core, Web3 is actually a new foundation for trust, right? Where everything can be verified, and, and you don't really need to place your trust on just one single source or entity, right? Um, this new common trust 
changes with, with what Web3 is, right? Uh, what, we, what you can do with the web, right? It's, it's a web that you own and that, that's for us. Um, when the printing press was demo, demo, when the printing press was created, it democratized the dissemination of information, right? Web3 democratizes the creation and the dissemination of value. So um, yeah, this is this is we're seeing this in a lot of different um, kind of novel ways now in Web3, but we're just trying to really push forward that it's not just taking existing mediums and bringing them and minting them, but how can we use this this extra value that is created uh, by cutting out middlemen and really create more compelling experiences for the audience as well. Um, and this is the participation scale, which you can see where we have been kind of up to producing, and now we're. Uh, going to this next frontier of co-owning with the audience, which is a little bit confusing, but there's a lot of people that are, are seeing lots of value in that, and that's where we're heading, uh, ultimately. Even with other brands, you know, you see Pepsi, and you see at the Super Bowl, people are dabbling in Web3. It's coming, even though it's very stigmatized. And that's another thing that we're, that we're wanting to do, is, is be able to onboard and educate people, especially on the road, and people are seeing awesome, you know, compelling pieces of media that are even better than what's coming out of, you know, normal labels like Sony. So here's the manifesto you can talk about. Yeah, so this is a reveal. They're a uh, splits contract platform. Uh, and they say, when ownership is pushed to the edges of the network, to its users, collaboration becomes shared property. And shared interest becomes shared equity. Um, I've been working with labels for a long time. And one of the main problems that I have is you know, there's no transparency. Payments usually take six months to a year, if not more. Um, and there's just not a good ecosystem for for us to thrive. Um, oh, I think it's time. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, this is just quickly the flywheel. You know, we have our, our IP that, that drives experiences, that drives collectors, and uh, they collect, which is membership. And then also, um, you know, we want to have campaigns also be able to have operate like a B Corp as opposed to just like a uh, traditional business. But uh, yeah, we are 8Bus, and thank you so much for your time. Let's hear it one more time for 8Bus. All right, we got two more teams that we want to bring before you today. The first team is from the VCU Brand Center, and they are working on a line of mocktails aimed to bring together non-drinkers and drinkers alike. Beautiful human beings, please welcome to the stage everything but the booze. Hi, I'm Andrew. I'm Celeste. And I'm Hunter. And we've got a problem, a drinking problem. But it's not what you might think. This is our friend and teammate, Christine. Like us, she's a first year student at BCU's Brand Center. But she often feels excluded and left out at social gatherings and parties. This is because she chooses not to drink. We believe that this choice of not drinking should not feel like a punishment. Because not sober curious, and non-drinkers shouldn't, folks, shouldn't be stuck in the corner holding a club soda. And if you've been to a social gathering or a party before and decided not to drink, you may have had a similar experience. You may even have had a mocktail that was dull and boring. Just like Andrew mentioned, mocktails are seen as dull and boring. I mean, come on, mocks right there in the name. So we want to shift this perception and give power back to the people at the party with drinks that both excite and satisfy. So we've created shock tales. And we're introducing EBTV, or Everything But The Booze, our fresh, juicy, non-alcoholic shock tales. With EBTV, everybody's invited to the party, including Christine, including my sister, who just found out she's pregnant, including my boyfriend, Jared, who's the designated driver, and our friend, Deva, who doesn't drink for religious reasons. So let's get into these flavors, right? First up, we've got, it's sangria, biatch. And then we've got margarita, that's hot. And last but certainly not least is our fat ass mule. So this is uh, 12 fluid ounces of pure fun. It's hangover free, made with all natural ingredients. And this includes drinkers and non-drinkers alike. If you want to put some tequila in your margarita, go for it. So we want to give the people what they want, right? 
NA and low alcoholic options are one of the fastest growing beverage segments on the market right now. Between 2021 and 2022, sales increased by 96%. The global ready-to-drink mocktail market is only expected to continue to grow with an estimated $9.43 billion of revenue by 2028. And most importantly, Gen Z drinks less than any other generation. Big brands, they're paying attention to that. Guinness, Budweiser, Heineken, and others are all crafting NA options. So we don't just think people will like our drinks because we know that they do. Over 500 people in the local Richmond area have already tried our product and they love what we've made. So with all this in mind, you may be wondering, what's next for EBTV? Currently, we're in the kitchen looking for a food scientist and co-packers. Today, we're here to ask for $10,000 to help us through this process. And later on, find us at the reception be, and give our shock tales a try. If this pitch didn't convince you, we know our shock tales will. Help us take EBTB to the next level because when everyone is invited to the party, it is more exciting. Cheers. Cheers. Let's hear it for everything but the booze. Twenty twenty three demo day. This is your final feature. This is a team of master of product innovation students, and they're developing a dental simulation product. And they've just created their LLC, and they're going to share the vision, of the future of the product. Everyone, please welcome George Rapper Dental. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Alana. My name is Perry, and we're also joined by our, our teammate Jamira, who's here with in spirit. Who's here with us in spirit? And we are Jaw Dropper Dental, and this is Fletcher. Fletcher is a dental shroud. He's part of a mannequin that dental students use to simulate working on people like you and me. He stretches over a metal head and a set of teeth to make it look a little more human. Fletcher has a very important job. He trains our future dentists in their techniques and procedures that they're going to use on us when they graduate into industry. Last semester, we were approached by the VCU School of Dentistry and the Commission on Dental, uh, Commission for Dental Competency Assessments, the CDCA, which is a company that administers dental certification exams across the country. Not only is Fletcher used in educational settings, but he's also required by board exams that certify students to become dentists. Uh, sorry. Fletcher himself is used in over 70 dental schools across the United States. That means that over 6,500 students have the pleasure of working with uh, Fletcher every single year come exam season. That's in addition to all the times they make his acquaintance throughout their four-year dental education period. Fletcher, however, has a problem. Fletcher rips exceedingly easily. Fletcher spills water everywhere. He's not very realistic to look at, and he costs a lot of money to replace. This means that your future dentists are focused on fighting a faulty mannequin rather than focusing on their dental education. So through our dedicated experimentation, we've come up with a solution to this problem that incorporates design features that address the current product's lack of strength, durability, and ease of use. And with a generous grant from the Da Vinci Center and their donors, we've been able to incorporate our LLC with the vision of bringing this product to market. We've also connected with a design and manufacturing company that has agreed to partner with us to bring this product to life. In addition, we've been able to gain a commitment and an influential connection with the CDCA to review our potential product with their in-house team of dental experts. And finally, we've also gained a commitment from the VCU School of Dentistry to be our initial beta testers for our high fidelity prototype. So from you, we ask for $8,000 that we will use to complete um, development on our high fidelity prototype with the hopes of gaining our initial sales contracts. 
So we plan, as I've said, we've already identified and begun working with a design and manufacturing house who's agreed to partner with us in bringing this product to market. We plan to use those funds to create a CAD file, which we'll use to reference as a reference for future production, as well as designing and creating a mold, which will be used to create our high fidelity prototype. And once said prototype has been developed, we will take it to the VCU School of Dentistry and the CDCA for further testing and review. So we ask that you join us in ensuring that future dental students worry less about fighting Fletch and more about acing tests. So thank you from Fletcher and our team, and we hope to talk to you more at the reception. Let's hear for George Rafford Dental. Thank you. All right, people, you know what to do. Take out your phones, scan that QR code on the screen, or scan the QR code that is in your program, or, or capture the link and just send it to a friend. You are going to get to pick your favorites of our seven features. Draw, chopper, dental, everything but the booze, A-plus, polarizer, fusion AI dynamics, tone ninja, and good botanicals. So I would love to do this. Put your phone down, you don't need that in this moment. We've had some amazing people take a big risk and stand on this stage and talk to you about themselves, their vision, their passion. They've asked you to sew into that, to give them help. That takes a lot of courage. And what I want you to do right now is take both of your hands and your mouth and your throat and please show so much appreciation to every person who stepped on this stage today. I said show your appreciation to every person. They're in the room so they can hear you. For everyone who touched on this day, thank you for choosing to do that here and allowing us to be a part of this moment today. Thank you for giving us a little bit of what you hope to do in the world, right? A lot of us experience problems every single day, but few of us do something about it. You all are courageous enough to take that big risk to do something about it. So thank you for allowing us to experience that today. We are only here because some folks have been very generous. Once again, let's thank Capital One for being our title sponsor. But on the screen, you see a bunch of logos. We have some great companies, some great people who come alongside the Da Vinci Center. Not only do they invest their money, but they invest their time and their energy to support the things that are happening here. So would you please show your support and love and appreciate for every single one of these companies. It's only because of that that we can make an investment in one of these features. So that is huge. So thank you so much. This room right here, it doesn't always look like this. There's not always a stage and balloons and a banner. We're on Zoom right now. Say what's up to everybody on Zoom. Hey, the folks on Zoom. Right? This took a whole lot of work. And these are the human beings that did that work Look at that, look at the collaboration, look at the partnership across VCU to make 2023 Demo Day possible. Would you please show your appreciation to this fantastic team? Thank you. Thank you for a lot of hard work to get everybody in here on a beautiful rainy day here in Richmond, Virginia. Now, for those of you that are like, yo, this is dope. Like, I, I want to show up. I want to be a part of this. Like, come on in. For real, come on in. We have our Masters of Product Innovation. All right, applications are open. If you've heard something today and it really resonates with you, you're like, I would love to be in an environment to explore my idea or figure out how to explore my idea. How do I do that? What are the steps that I would take? We would love for you to come on in and be a part of what happens here 
Uh, there's a bunch of us who are connected to the DaVinci Center. We can tell you more about it. But please take a look at our Master of Product Innovation. And maybe if you do that, I don't know, you might be on stage one day talking about your idea, pitching it to a room like this, all right? So please, take a look at the Master of Product Innovation. OK. So let me make sure I've got the card, which is on my phone. Let's see. Oh, I do. I do. <laughs> All right, so this is the fun part. You all have picked some of your favorites, and we want to give out some awards. Is that cool? Yeah. Um, so, Greg, you're going to help me do that. Um, you match the awards perfectly, so this is a great photo opportunity. So thank you for dressing accordingly. Um, all right, we're going to work our way down. So we're going to go start with our ideas and walk all the way through our features, and so Thank you for participating, paying, and devoting. Um, I love, can we, can we like, like drum roll on our, can we do it? Yeah, a little drum roll, all right. So this is for our ideas. We are gonna honor today, Betty. Be tall, friend of project, come on out, Betty. You are our crowd favorite, our favorite idea. Come on up. Receive your award, helping tall people everywhere sleep a little bit better. Thank you so much. All right, now we're going to go to our academics. Give me a little bit more drum roll. The crowd favorite of our academic winner, first, G. Fresh. Come on up. Helping these students figure out how to pay for their education. Congratulations. First, G Fresh. All right. We brought them back so we can hear about what they were doing. I need a drum roll for our alumni winner. That feels good. Let's hear it. For Octawine! <laughs> Figuring out how we're gonna help with recruitment, folks getting jobs. Let's hear it one more time for Octawine, our crowd favorite. Congratulations. All right. Are you tired? Are your hands up? Can you, I need one more. Can I get one more from you? Can you give me one more? Because this one, it was your favorite of our seven features. Some of you really like it because you hate getting told by VCU. Let's hear it for Toe Ninja. Our crowd favorite today. Congratulations, Jack. One more time, let's hear it for all of our crowd favorites for today. So, 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 so. In the words of the great Tina Riley, the party's not over. Ooh, that reference did not work. Y'all are not the right age. Two of you got it. Party's not over. So we are going to continue over to the Shift Retail app, right, which is just down that corridor. You saw a sampling up here. There's so much more to see. So we're going to invite you to go over into the Shift Retail lab and explore the many, many companies and projects and ideas that are on display, right? You'll be able to interact with them, answer some, get some questions answered, learn more about each of those, OK? So please do that. And then. If you want to head across the street, we got a bunch of engineering students as part of our Capstone Design Expo showing off all of their senior Capstone projects as well. So you got a lot to see and explore. I don't know if it's raining, but you all right. It's just water. You can get wet. You fine. But if you want to start in the shift lab and stay dry, do that first. 
the please feel free to go across the street. My name is Todd B. Waldo. It's been my pleasure to be your host once again. Thank you so much for being here. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. And we'll see you over at Shift Lab. Thank you, everyone.